Everybody's a suspect. Coming to get you, Barbara. Hi guys, my name is Barry and welcome back to the channel. Just yesterday, I done a video on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequel that's coming out in February 2022 from Netflix. And lo and behold, I knew this was going to happen. As soon as I uploaded the video, the trailer came out. I just knew that was going to happen. Um, unfortunately, I watched the trailer, so I'm not going to be doing a trailer reaction. What I'll do is a, a semi-breakdown of the trailer and tell you what I think. Um, with regards to the trailer, the trailer was fine. It was a short trailer, it's just over a minute long. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't really want to do a, a trailer reaction to it because it was just a teaser trailer. You didn't really see much in the trailer either, but something that really annoyed me about the trailer, you know, first of all, it was a good trailer. Really good that it didn't show you too much. That's what I really like about that trailer. But something about this, and it annoys me with all the previous, not all the previous, but most of the previous Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies that we've had since the pre the prequel came out in 2006. You know, I love the prequel and I love the remake. So the, re the remake and the prequel to the remake, 2003-2006. That duo of Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies is fantastic. I love those two movies together because they're just so tightly knit together. It is a shame that we didn't get anything after that because those were the two movies that we should have built on in the Texas Chainsaw franchise, but we didn't get that. So in 2013, we got Texas Chainsaw 3D and they tried to replicate or emulate what happened and you know, the look and the feel of the 2003 movie and the 2006 movie. It just didn't work. Then 2017 came along with Leatherface and they tried to do the same thing again. They tried to make it look and feel like the prequel and the remake. It's almost like they admit that they should they should have continued with those movies, but they just didn't or couldn't. Maybe it's a rights issue with Platinum Dunes. So, and that failed. Now we've got this 2022 movie from Netflix, although Netflix didn't make the movie. Netflix bought the movie over after it was done. And looking at this trailer, it seems like they've just done the exact same thing again. Only this time they've tried to make it almost identical to the remake and the prequel. Even the sound and the look and feel of the trailer was almost the exact same as the look and feel of the trailers for the 2003 movie and the 2006 movie. So I think what we're going to get here is almost like a copycat movie and an attempt to make this movie look and feel as good as the 2003 movie and the 2006 movie and I don't think that's going to work. We'll go through some of the key points in the trailer. So first of all, you've got the, the beginning that makes it look like it's old. Uh, from 1973, even though it says 1974 in the trailer, that's when the movie came out. 1973 was when the movie was set. So we've got a kind of dusk looking setting. I don't know if that's supposed to be the original house. It looks a little bit too small, but it kind of looks like it anyway. Um, and then you get a few dark scenes of what looks to be Leatherface's current home, that where he's been living for God knows how long, 50 years or so, just under 50 years. Uh, it looks quite moody, but again, it looks very similar to the 2003 remake. Uh, and then you've got a picture here. Again, it's similar to the family aspect of 2003 and 2006. Yes, I know he has a family in the original movie, but the way they do it in this trailer is almost like they're trying to do it like they did in the 2003 slash 2006 movies. We've got a, a clip of Leatherface pulling his chainsaw out of the, the wall in this one. So that goes with what we saw the synopsis being, where Leatherface has been living a double life, basically, for under 50 years, just under 50 years, and he's not done anything, he's not killed anyone, he's just trying to blend into society. Uh, I had a few comments, and I agree with most of the comments on my last video, that, yes, it sounds like a good idea, but Leatherface being the simple person that he is, how can he live a life live a normal life without some help from a family member because he's too simple to, to blend in. He was going to make mistakes unless he has a family member with him that we don't know of yet and they're keeping him on a straight and narrow or hiding him so that nobody sees him and so he doesn't make mistakes. That's the only explanation I can think of. If it turns out that he has become this smart person, then they're not really going with the true aspects of the original movie. Remember, he's not a maniac. In the original, he's not this um, 
person with a brain, you know, his family are the brains of the outfit. He's just a simpleton brother or son in the family. We do get a few quick shots of some of the characters in the movie. We saw some of these characters in the, the still image that we got yesterday, and this is them obviously being attacked or trying to get away from Leatherface. So there's a couple of images there, and you can see the van in that image as well. So it all kind of ties up to the original still that we got just under 24 hours ago. And this is classic 2003 trailer um, from the remake. You've got somebody hiding under the boards or, and it goes into kind of darkness and then all of a sudden the chainsaw comes out of nowhere. I, I don't know why they're doing it like this. It's almost like they're telling us, you know, we appreciate the 2003 movie and we know that we've made a mistake by cutting it too short. So let's try and give you something that is very reminiscent of the feel of that movie, but we're trying to go with the the Halloween aspect where we're just cutting off all the movies yet again and trying to start again afresh from after the original movie. This shot here of, is it Sarah Yarkin? Um, somebody's screaming and it's definitely not Sarah Yarkin that's screaming because the scream doesn't go with the voice of her mouth opening. So that's obviously a, a badly cut part of the trailer. This seems to be the title card of the, the movie and the font that they're going with. I quite like this font because it is obviously very reminiscent of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974. Quite clean, very different to the 2003 movie, which again is probably the only difference I can see in this film. Uh, but the title looks pretty good to be honest. And then we obviously get the last shot of an older leather face holding up someone's face. Um, so we know that he's gonna be taking some faces in the movie. Um, and that's it, you know, that's all we get of Leatherface's kind of face, even though we only get the back of him. Overall, guys, it looks good, but it looks too samey. It looks like it's trying to copy the, uh, movies in the franchise that it shouldn't be copying. It is a sequel to the original 1974 movie, so if it's going to be copying anything, it should be trying to copy the look and the feel of the 1974 movie. But yet again, another sequel in and another scrap of a timeline they're going back to basics, but at the same time, they're just trying to copy the remake and the prequel. So what do you guys think? Do you think I'm way off? Do you think it doesn't look anything like the 2003 or the 2006 movie? Does it look anything like the, two, the 1974 movie? And obviously, do you think this movie looks good? As always, guys, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.